I want to talk a little bit about design progression. These are our PVG machines. We were the first ones to come up with this style of a screener. Engine out on the end. Two eccentrics that drove the screen deck up and down, pivoting from the top. At that time, it was a great design. We were kind of the first ones out with it. But we found over time there was issues with that. And one of the issues was having our drives down at the bottom. If people didn't clean the material out and let it build up too high, as the eccentrics kept going around, it was trying to pick the screener up. Pretty soon it was cutting out the seal. Bearings were failing. So there was a design issue, not totally the machine's fault, but sometimes the way that the operator was using it if they weren't paying attention. The other thing is we had designed this gate and wing system. Again, this is our design, something that we came out with in, uh, I believe, 07 or 08. You're going to see another company out there doing the exact same thing. In fact, if you look at the gates, they're the exact same shape. The drive's exactly the same. Again, I just want to go back and say, if you're not out actually testing the product, it's hard to move forward and be progressive in your design because you're just running around copying what other people are doing. Sometimes that's a mistake because you're copying sometimes something that is not as good as it could be on a machine, so you're just passing that on in your design. I want to go over and take a look. This is our SLG 108 machine, and it's, again, a 10-foot wide screen deck. Same as this machine. This was a 44-inch mesh. This one here is almost 6 foot long from top to bottom. Almost 60 square feet of screening surface on this machine here. Big advantage of this, this screen deck slope on this style of machine, this design, can't change the screen deck slope. You can slide your legs out, we'll do a little bit. But ultimately, between wet and dry material, you need more variation. Again, one of the things that we learned through the progression of designing our machines. This screener here, I'm just going to do it a little bit from the front, but you have the ability to take this from 45 degrees all the way back to 30 degrees. What's really important about that is if you've got wet material, you want a steep screen deck. If you've got dry material, you want the ability to lay that back, hold the material up there a little bit longer, and it's 100% manipulated by the operator. When he comes in, lays his bucket on there, pours his material in, he can move his boom up and down, change the slope, watch the material from the other side as it's traveling across the screen deck. It's a great way for him to be able to control exactly the kind of changing materials, changing moisture, different screen size, whether you're screening sand or soil or rock, everything travels differently on the screener. And if you don't have the ability to change the way the slope and the way that it reacts on the screen, some stuff's gonna work great, other stuff's not gonna work very well, some stuff doesn't work at all. So this machine here, you're looking at just over seven grand for this machine. Again, better design, more efficient. We used to sell this for $12,995. Um, we're selling this for just over seven. Again, it's given people that option who never thought they could screen before because they just didn't want to invest that much money in a screener. All of a sudden, it's affordable. It's 10 foot wide, so it fits the big skid steers, the ones that are running the 84 inch buckets, you know, the 86 inch buckets, 100 horse skid steers. This is a good machine for that because of the width of the screen deck. You also have the horsepower and the lift capacity. Pick it up, pack it around. Same idea, we have the lift extensions in here, so you can pick it up, pallet fork it, anywhere you want to go. The beauty of it also is that you can take it and move it into a very tight area. When you've got a screener that's on wheels, it's usually having to be hooked to a pickup. Or you have to unhook it from that, put a ball on your machine. Say you're trying to get in and get in behind a house. When you're trying to tow something around, it's maybe a little bit wet or it's a little bit sloped, it can be very difficult. With this machine here, you just literally pack it up, pick it up, pack it anywhere you want to go. If it's 8 foot wide or 10 foot wide, you can slip through there, turn, go behind the house, move it around on site. Again, it's all about versatility. If it's difficult to use, you're not going to make the most of the screener. If it's easy to use, you're going to want to see where you can implement it every day, all day, in all of your different projects. I wanted to come back and, and just address a little bit more the, uh, the drive system on, on our old design. It's the eccentric drive. Again, pay attention to the fact that if the person's feeding it, once the soil gets built up to here, when he shows up with his next bucket because he forgot to clean it out, he's wondering, what in the world do I do? Oh, I'll just pour it in the top real quick and then I'll grab it from the bottom. But by the time he pours it in the top and gets done, it's built up to here. 
And those drives are sitting underneath that material going round, round, and round, trying to actually pick the screener off the ground. That's where we found we had issues with this system where the material is passing the drive system. It was too dirty of an environment. We could do better. That's why we designed the SLG machines. Don't have any of those issues anymore. Again, you only know that through experience. So we progressed, moved past it, came out with a better design. You'll notice that this also pivots from the top. You have less movement at the top, more movement at the bottom. Secret to good screening is kind of a consistent movement. So it's evenly going across the whole deck. We learned that through progression. With our new machines, same thing. It vibrates all the way across the deck and it's even. If you need more movement, you can move that deck up and down with, the, with your buckets <clears throat> on your skid steer or your tractor to actually help that progression along. So it's versatility, being able to use the machine differently for different materials and that machine having the versatility to be able to do that for you. As you can kind of hear, we got some wind out here today and this was one of the, the reasons why we took our power plant off the side of the screener. When you're feeding this machine right now and it's dry out, you've got dust just going everywhere. It doesn't matter whether the engine's on this end of the screener or that end of the screener. If the wind's blowing that way and the motor's here, that's great. If the wind shifts and turns around and blows back across, you're either faced with cleaning out your screener, picking your whole plant up, turning everything around and working the other way. That takes time and it's not efficient. We found the most efficient thing to do was actually remove the engine, take it away from the screener, put it remotely where you could plug it in with an extension cord. No dust over there. Doesn't matter what's happening over here. What we're showing you here is uh, this is the backside of the SLG 108. Um, it's not on the riser box right now. Uh, so now it's at a height that you can feed it with your skid steer. That's hugely beneficial and again goes back to versatility. If you own a back or a wheel loader, um, this is too low. If you own a backhoe, wheel loader, and a skid steer and you want to be able to use all three, you can put this up on the riser box, use your backhoe and wheel loader. If you want to use your skid steer, you just kick the four belts loose on each corner, the nylon straps that we provide. And within a matter of two minutes, it's down on the ground. Again, you can kind of see where the feed height is. It's the correct feed height for a skid steer, and it still leaves you lots of room to get in and out. One of the issues with, with some of the other stuff and the other machines out there is they'll have a crossbar height that's about this high on their screener. So when you're coming in with your backhoe and trying to clean it out, all the new backhoes or most of the new backhoes have that single tilt cylinder that's sitting right out in the middle of your boom. So you have to be careful when you're coming in, you can't get all the way in with your bucket because your, your tilt cylinder is going to make contact with that screener. So you can't get the full benefit of trying to get all your material out of the box. You're always moving and moving the material just from this part out. So again, we're recognizing the, the issues, trying to solve problems, figuring out how we can design our machines that'll be more efficient in the long term. Again, it comes back to efficiency. This is our, just to get up close here, this is our, our design that we have with the C springs and, and the coil springs. The SLG 78 and the 108, same concept, but what we've done on the, on the 108 is we've duplexed everything on each side. You got two C springs on each side, you got two coil springs. On this one here, what we've done, there's only four grease certs on this whole chain. You've got a pivoting point here and here that just allows your, your coil springs to be able to center up as the deck's compressing. Uh, short of that, the C-Springs, no place to service it. When you're done with this machine, you just kind of blow it off, sweep it off, kick the dirt off, throw it on the trailer, the way you go. Really simple.